Good morning. I'd like to call the Highway and Waterways meeting, <coughs> Committee meeting from Thursday, June the 22nd, 2023 to order. Um, roll call, please. Mr. Carrico? Present. Mr. Dunnell? Present. Mr. Featherling? Present. Mr. Snipes? Present. Mr. Smith? Ms. Armour Herbs? Mr. Ashcraft? Ms. Ritmanekemi? Ms. Turner? Present. Mr. Wheeler? Mr. Alexander Hildebrand? We have a quorum. Thank you. Uh, before going forward, I would like to welcome everyone for being here today, and also my special thank you to our guests here today, uh, President State Senator Patrick Joyce. Uh, I believe that we have uh, someone representing the, the State Senator Elgin Sims office, um, and also State Representative uh, Jackie Haas for being here today also. Um, I do have one public comment here, but before we go forward with that, what I like to say is that some of our guests may, you know, they may have other commitment to attend. So please, if you could keep your questions and discussions out brief, allowing everyone to have a fair chance to address related topics. Thank you. And on the public comment, I have one over here, and believe that is from Ryan Bell. If you can go to the back microphone, please, and introduce yourself. Good morning. My name's Ryan Bell. I'm the fire chief for Limestone Township. Uh, recently, we had an incident where we lost a motor on our 1987 fan boat. That's pretty priceless for trying to run this part of the Kankakee River. Um, our representative for our district, Craig Wong, along with Andrew Wheeler, they both took some interest in this, realizing the uh, the importance of this piece of equipment along with Senator Joyce and they were help they were able to help us secure some ARPA money to do the right thing with this piece of equipment um, the boat is running we actually had it out on the river yesterday I can tell you the river is extremely low in most places um, and this is about the only thing this and a hovercraft are about the only things that can navigate the uh, west side of the county down that river um, in between the deeper holes that come up around like the Indian caves uh, things of that nature. Um, because of this money, we're able to have something to be able to get out there to help somebody in need. Um, I can't thank everybody enough for that. Um, didn't think that the uh, 1987 fan boat that we have would draw some attention the way it did, but uh, it's, uh, it's a strong running piece of equipment again, and it couldn't have been done without the leadership that these guys showed to help us get that done. So I, I, from the bottom of our hearts in Limestone Township, we appreciate everybody's help with that. Thank you. Next will be the approval for the of minutes from May 18, 2023. Can I have a motion and a second, Mr. Donald? Okay, Featherland second. Everybody in favor signify by say aye. 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 Anybody opposed, the same sign. Motion carries, thank you. Uh, when it comes to um, the guests that I previously introduced, um, I would like to see if um, any of the guests will have anything that you'd like to address the uh, committee. If, if not, uh, we're going to have a presentation coming up soon. You can also um, make some comments afterwards. Um, do any of our guests have any anything that you want to say? No, here no. Okay. Next on the agenda would be um, the waterways, would be the Aroma Park Sentiment pro, uh, Progress uh, Update. And I'm going to pass this to uh, Chairman Wheeler. And he has some stuff that he'd like to present here today. Go ahead, thank, sir. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. The, the, uh, for the benefit of our, our legislators who may not know every wrench that's been turned here over the years to get to this point, I thought it may be a, a good for a brief as much as possible lead up to why this committee was created uh, or we adapted the highways committee more appropriately to include waterways. So uh, if I could, we can uh, share the, the, the screen there of the uh, presentation. Uh, there's a paper copy out. I have other paper copies. They were back here. I hope everybody got one. Uh, if you need one after the meeting, we can get you that as well. So. Um, the committee has seen different parts of this. There is some updates and then Burke Engineering, when I'm done, will have a final draft of the um, engineering plan for the aroma dredging project, uh, which is the result of both their um, 
initial assessment, refining of that, looking at the uh, morphology and, and the geology, if you will, of the surrounding areas in that, in that uh, part of the river, and then also talking with our new uh, highway employee who worked for the Army Corps of Engineers. He had some suggestions that were adopted by Burke, uh, and that's what you'll see on the screen, not in your packet, because we just met at eight this morning to finalize that. And before somebody asks the question, uh, the muscle study will be done on just the area that will be dredged. It won't have to be done as it stands now. It doesn't look like it have to be done anywhere else, which will reduce the cost of that, that part of the process. So um, beyond this, I'll just start running through it. If you have a question, please stop and ask it or stop me and ask it. Otherwise, I'll try to fly through this as quick as possible, being respectful of everybody else's time. Uh, so when I first got involved in the, the river stuff, it was in 2017 early, I believe. It was uh, the, uh, they have commissioners in Indiana. There's three commissioners over Lake County. One of them reached out to me talking about the state line bridge, which is a disaster. Um, it's, it's uh, I won't go into too much detail, but this is what you would see most of the year. Trees stacked up pushing against the bridge that is only about six inches in Illinois, but when it falls, and I say when, because scrappers are taking metal off of it. It's 100 years old. It's not historic, but it's eligible for historic preservation. And it's just, it's beyond its useful life. So if it falls, it's coming in Illinois. And so we had a very, um, this was supposed to be um, fixed per an agreement with the Federal Highway Authority as, is what's called a mitigation for doing another bridge down the road from here. Um, but the bids came back at $7 million to rehab this bridge without even doing the approaches, which are underwater most of the year. And you could never drive an emergency vehicle across it because, <laughs> as I said to the committee, I call it a cyclone of stupid. You, you have to restore it to historical uh, nature, which includes those three poles or those poles on the side, but it, the bridge wouldn't be rated for emergency vehicles. So you couldn't drive across a bridge that can only be rehabbed for driving purposes and not a walking bridge. It, it just this conversation went around and around for years. So I'm just I just want people to know it may seem simple. This has been a real problem because it acts as a cow catcher for all those trees. And and again, it, it's our problem alone if it comes into Illinois. So this was the result of the beginning. Uh, we all were sending letters to Federal Highway saying, "Look, come on, let's get out of this situation. Let's store this bridge somewhere. Let's not destroy it." But it can't it's past its useful life and it can't be rehabbed for the purpose it was built so moving towards this is fast forward here till last year really we formed this committee because you can't do anything without money you got all these great intentions but in, in the end you need the funds to do it and uh senator joyce was was key in in, in getting us that and pushed hard and got us a million for the dredging project at aroma park where we can't get the rescue boats in the water uh, right out the back door of the fire station in the boatable part of the river. So that's where this all started with that project um, way back when. This has been quite a while. The senator helped deliver on that. Uh, the $7 million appropriation was the next thing was, was because these situations come up, instead of chasing money for each project and have the sand fill in, why not get the equipment to maintain the river until the Indiana group is able to stop the sand uh, from coming our direction. That is the key, and it's gonna be, it's been 100 years, it's gonna be 20 or 30 or 40, it's still coming, it's just coming faster than it ever has before in larger amounts. Uh, so we're gonna invest in that equipment and do the work out of our highway department. Um, and it's, it's important to note that it's not an overall fix to the sediment situation, uh, but it's a long-term effort, and we want to be able to utilize this river and, and keep it healthy until the, the big fix can happen down the road. And that's a very expensive proposition, but you can maintain this and clean it out for the benefit and reduce flooding and all of those other things. But in order to go from the state line all the way to the other side of the county is an expensive proposition all in one throw. And plus it would fill back in right now, it doesn't make sense. Let's get to that point is I think what we're saying. Um, now this is also important. There's a 40 year work plan. I heard a lot in the past that there is no plan. Uh, if we could click on that link really quick, uh, it says kankeeandyellowrivers.org. I encourage the public, everybody in this commission, our elected officials, go over there and check this out. This is the commission in Indiana that I'm a representative of 
of Illinois on, if you will, us in Iroquois County, and it's all the counties along the Kankakee and Yellow Rivers in Indiana. But the important part, you can skim through all of this, there's a lot of great information here, but if you go all the way down to the bottom, it'll say work plan. And it's uh, different places on there, it says Kankakee River work plan. That is a 280 page document of highly engineered solutions that are both for the Indiana side and then I, the mayor of Watsika and the chairman of Iroquois County had Kankakee and Iroquois counties added to this because we wanted an idea where do we start with the funds that we would be able to, keep, to potentially have and at the time having no funds. So that was created and they created a commission in Indiana by an act of their legislature and that document and that work plan is bound in the mission of that commission, if you will. Um, they have to follow that work plan uh, per the legislation in Indiana. So, and again, there's things that we can do uh, in Illinois and those are recommended and we'll get into those. So, uh, and then we also have to a plan for the 2024 appropriations. If the equipment is gonna be here, we're gonna do some work because there's things that have to be done. Um, so we can probably, uh, you know, flip the page. We don't know what lead times are on an amphibious excavator yet. Uh, and Ben will talk about that a little bit because he's handling the grant management side, if you will, with uh, uh, DNR, who's, they're, they're handling it like a grant, but it is an appropriation. So again, it's important to say there is a work plan. If you click the button, uh, there's also one for Illinois as well. You can keep moving on that. Um, now these numbers on the side where it says like section 5.1.3, that's actually in the work plan if you wanna to refer to these things. But our things that we should be doing is reduce the sediment supply, uh, zone specific access and log jam management, conduct storage areas, or construct storage areas along the laterals and I'll show you what we've done in Indiana, uh, which is what we need to do here. You'd rather have the river flood farmland than a wastewater plant or a hospital. And so those types of things matter when you're planning for the future on how you're gonna deal with a river that's always gonna be a river. You can't stop flooding, because it's a river. It's gonna happen, just the frequency and the impact is what we're working on. And then strategic flood protection measures is the last item on there. We can, there's other policy you know, things that we need to work on, like, hey, don't build a house on the river and then complain that you're flooding. That's probably not the best use of, of a zoning policy in the county is is to uh, to continue to allow those types of things because uh, all it does is feed into the the overall cost and of uh, impact of a major flood event. So we can keep moving. Um, we have 2.1 miles in Illinois uh, that have been identified as severe erosion. There's more obviously, uh, but this is just to the confluence of the Iroquois uh, and Kankakee River. We can keep moving on that. Um, and you see some of those areas marked off over there on South uh, uh, River Road there, uh, South Shore Golf Course area is a few. The next slide, there's a few more by Shamrock uh, over there by that golf course. Uh, I Incidentally, just south of the bridge there on Laura Lane, we have a bunch of FEMA buyout properties where we're gonna drop a, as part of the, uh, I'll call it the Joy 7 million, uh, we're gonna drop boat ramps in there so we can get our equipment in the water on that side of the bridge. So if we have log jams and, and things that are building up on that side, we need to build these ramps and that was one of the recommendations. Those are all included in the list of things that we are going to do with that seven million. Uh, this is a singleton ditch, we've talked about that. The important, I'll let you read it on your own, but on the bottom there, if we were to do what Indiana has done, as evidenced by the, the photo in the next slide, which is carve back all of these, the banks, so they don't just calve into the river like icebergs, the sediment, um, would be 4. what, 513, uh, by the way, 2019 dollars or 2020 dollars. We don't know what that is today, but it's a lot. Um, that's, and that's what we've done in Indiana. We're driving trees and using them almost like pins to drive them into the ground to hold this all stable and then carving back, this was straight, almost a 90 degree straight up and down sand cliff all the way through this stretch. What's ironic about all of this is you can actually see the bottom now in this part of the river in Indiana. You can see the, the bottom, it's, it's, when was the last time you could see that in Illinois? And that was after like a year and a half. 
So we can keep moving. I'll try to fly through this as quick as I can. There's some of the uh, zone specific access things that we have. You'll see a piece of uh, equipment and attachments that address these things for us to do them ourselves. Um, this is Thayer Farm in Indiana. We talk about uh, storage areas along laterals and offset. You've got to have storage. You can't let everything just pour into the river and expect it to act like um, a properly functioning drainage system. Uh, so that's Thayer Farm in Indiana. We can move to the next slide. Um, there's the general area over there by Thayer in the right corner. Land is owned by the uh, Kankakee and Yellow River Basin Development Commission. And what they did is they constructed on two separate 200 acre sites that are connected the spillway. And it's already worked one time this year after they constructed it, it's up and running and it did exactly what it was supposed to do. It takes high water and reduces high water pressure on the system. We need these all over because you're not gonna restore the Grand Kankakee Marsh, no matter how much somebody wants to do that. Uh, reality is such that you're gonna need places for water to be that somewhat acts as a retention area like a, a, a marshland did before. Uh, we, we, meaning as a people, decided to dredge or cut a ditch in Indiana and turn it into a, a ditch instead of a functioning ecosystem. So there's all the stuff that we have when we talk about work plans, that's things that we need to be doing and they're identified. We can keep moving. This is the dredge site, if you will, originally for the Aroma Park area. Uh, and you'll see what we have kind of come down to uh, when Charles does his presentation in a minute. Uh, but you can't even get rescue boats into that part of the river. And that's um, just north of that spot there is where the uh, aroma fires at and uh, they have to bring it all the way somewhere else to get it basically to save a boat that is could be capsized right outside their back door so we can keep moving there these are some other things we put in the request uh, from uh, DNR these are active sediment collector systems whether they go on the singleton ditch or we decide to put them at the state line they're not cheap uh, but the ancillary equipment allows sand just to be pumped out of there and cleaned out uh, you still have to have places to put it and it's still going to be filling up probably weekly monthly to be cleaned out those are things we'll have to talk to potentially drainage districts about maybe they help us out with that there's an amphibious excavator gives you an idea what they would do we can keep moving these are things in the grant this is the boom truck at the end of that attachment has a would have a saw so you can reach over a bridge and uh grab stuff like if you see all of our bridges here uh, they've got uh, a lot of pressure being put on them by a lot of log jams. So you need low boys to, to take that around. That's in the uh, the grant. Uh, we're going to be able to trip or chip whole trees at once. Just grab the tree, saw it off with an attachment, and shred that thing like Fargo. Uh, so we're just just we'll be able to well not quite like Fargo, uh, but it's it's uh, it's cool stuff, and it also is going to be highly functional and mobile better to truck out of their chips of wood than it is all, all trees uh, so or whole trees this is the list um, one half of the list I should say the next page is if you look you'll see conservancy on there we got a bunch of stuff for the conservancy district which has purview over the river from moments to the state line so they're a, a partner in doing a lot of things they, they need some equipment uh, they don't have much of a budget I believe their levies around 10 grand a year which is not much basically pays for the gas for the chainsaws in the boat to go out and grab logs and get them out of the way. Uh, but that's how they would use this equipment, not anything that we would dictate. They're their own entity. Uh, this is a, just as a sample, uh, a letter request. One of the things we're gonna do, we're gonna help the park district with their harbor wall, because we've gotta get in the river on that side of the I-57 bridge down at Beckman Park. That's the only place that the uh, boat ramp is out of the current, so that's essential if we're gonna be floating barges and, th and things like that out into the river. So this is, uh, this is an agreement that's over with the park district. I was told that they agree with this uh, in principle. Uh, they just gotta go through the motions to approve it. They're gonna allow us to dewater on site uh, so we don't have to truck all of this sand somewhere unload it, let it dewater, and then load it back up. The real cost on these projects is the trucking, the transport, and the disposal. We think we might have a way to mitigate a lot of that, which means you get more project out of it. 
Um, and then uh, this is just uh, in writing some of the stuff that Charles would uh, talk about and I just went ahead and put it in there so you'd have it in your printed packet. So uh, I think that was it. Maybe one more slide. Yeah, Charles, and then I think that's, is there any questions about any of that from our legislators, from the committee? You know, we've talked about this stuff on and offline, but willing to uh, okay. get as specific as we need to. Uh, Senator Joyce, I believe, have questions in the back there or comments? Yeah, it's more of a comment than questions. When we first started looking at this, I mean, we met with uh, our own park fire district. I met with Chairman Wheeler and, and quite a few of you in this room as well as the conservancy on, we got a lot of work to do. I mean, we've got a hundred years of sand coming from Indiana. Indiana has helped push us um, into doing something. Um, they're, they're doing a lot of mitigation on bank stabilization and, and solving the ero uh, erosion problems that are coming towards us. So when we were able to secure some money from the state and the budget for this, the initial conversations were, how do we leverage that for long term um, on one of the best resources that Kanki County has? And the equipment purchase, when you talk to Scott Pelleth and the people in Indiana, they'd have given anything to have the equipment at the beginning. So purchasing the equipment at the beginning is, is gonna afford us so many opportunities to do a lot of the work ourselves, which is gonna ultimately save money. If you wanted to go out and bid a project by a project by a project and, and have the engineering for each one of those and, and do it a little bit at a time, that seven million would be gone in a minute. And by doing it this way, I think we've got a really good opportunity of having 10 to 20 years, and we need more like 50 years of work on this river and be vigilant on doing so. Um, I think it's a good program. I think we've got a lot of work to do with, with um, you know, Iroquois County and Kankakee County and even Will County on, on what we have to do to come together as community locally, statewide, and federally. We need to dip into all those buckets and, and get this resource that, that drains hundreds of thousands of acres um, from Indiana all the way through here. So what has been a problem, I mean, I've heard about issues with the Kanky River my whole life. I looked at a study, my father had a book from engineering from Illini, Illinois University in 1959 and in the first 10 pages of that study, it says that the Kanki River will be unnavigable by 2020. And that was done in 1959. Guess what? They're right. So we should have been doing this 30 years ago, 20 years ago, 40 years ago. Indiana shouldn't have straightened out their parts of the river. We, I think we all agree with that now. Um, but we have work to do, and this is a drop in the bucket. This is that 40 year study we need to use that and the dollars that come with it. That's why uh, myself and Jackie Haas are in Springfield. We need to fight for funding to get this resource. It floods out people, it floods farmland. Um, it's not utilized recreationally as much as it could and should. This should be a resource that attracts people to our county, to our city, and if we do this right, and then you look at all the, the boardwalk and the river walk, well, we have to have a healthy river to have all that too. And, and that's where my focus has been. So, you know, I wanna thank everyone locally that is taking um, the initiative to, to make this not only a highway department, but a water department too. That's a step in the right direction. So I applaud the board for doing that. And, and just let's all stay vigilant and work together. Keep having meetings with the conservancy, the people that are along the river, keep the public informed. And as soon as we start actually, <laughs> uh, Chairman Wheeler and I have discussed it, as soon as we start putting a shovel in the river and we actually see something or do something that people can see, they're gonna start believing it because everybody's heard about the studies for the last 60 years. We have to do something and we're starting that way. So I applaud everyone in this room for doing that and uh, looking forward to working with you as we move forward. Thank you. Is there any other um, state elected official present here today that have any comments in regarding to the uh, presentation? Okay, Representative Haas. 
thank you. Um, I would agree with everything that our senator said and look forward to continuing to work at the state level to, to make our river um, the, the highlight that it is for our community. I was born and raised along the river in moments and and we still have the property there that our family had that um, that I grew up on and and that was always kind of the pride of our um, where we grew up and, and a part of, of my history and I want to continue to make that um, the highlight of our our district and and again as the senator said look forward to continuing to work um, on the local level and on the state level and and with the the board here to um, make this the highlight of our district. So thank you for the work that you're doing. Thank you. <clears throat> Anything from uh, State Senator um, Sims office? Uh, I'm sorry? Hard copy. Oh, uh, you looking for a hard copy? Okay. All right. All right. Any members have any comments or any questions? Um, Mr. Snipes. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, I do think it's a step in the right direction. Uh, as long as I've been around, uh, we've always heard about the river. Uh, I, my family owns uh, uh, along the river in moments. Uh, the uh, used to be 60 acre farm and now <laughs> the state has bought the conservative part because we're right on the river. Uh, and Indiana, we're only six miles from in the Indiana uh, uh, line, so it's a it definitely affects us, however, as well as another uh, I think 14 acres along the river coming through moments. Uh, so uh, it'll be a great once this is all completed. It's probably not in my lifetime, but in the lifetime of the posterity, that they'll be able to enjoy the river as it should be enjoyed uh, in the, on the farm that's uh, on 114, as well as going through moments along the street of uh, Franklin. So um, I think it's a step in the right direction. The start will, the, I do uh, uh, agree that once the, st once the public can see the shovels going in, then they'll know that something is now being done versus all of the, uh, preliminary uh, talks as far as getting it to that particular point. I uh, do want to say thank you to the state legislators for uh, getting that uh, uh, dollar amount secured so that we can get the necessary equipment. Um, would love to hear from some point from uh, some of the workers that's right that's going to be doing this work from the highway department. Uh, it would just be interesting to hear how and what they think because they're the actual individuals that's doing that particular work. My only comments, thanks. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, so next uh, I believe it will be uh, Charles from um, Burst Engineering. Yes, thank you, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, perfect, I'm gonna attempt to share my screen. Are you able to see what's on the screen? Yep. Okay, so I'll just briefly reintroduce myself. My name's Charlie Dweez. I'm a civil engineer, I work at Christopher Burke, and we've uh, been working with in Andrew Wheeler, uh, Chairman Wheeler, to uh, work on a dredge plan for freeing up the sediment around the uh, Aroma Park boat launch. So we've been uh, working on that plan for several months now, and we now are to the point where we've had discussions with Chairman Wheeler and uh, Jeremiah and others from the County Highway uh, to finalize that plan, and we're getting ready to submit our permits. So I brought up on here the uh, bathymetry, which is basically just the elevations that were shot along the bottom of the river way back at the uh, end of last year and the beginning of this year, 2023, we did a sonar uh, bathymetry, which basically just shoots the bottom of the river. We wanted to find out what the high spots and the low spots were. Um, everything you see in the lighter color on your screen is our higher uh, spots where sediment has accumulated. Um, we essentially found the south fork of the river 
uh, opposite of the Roma Park boat launch is, is deeper. You see his 592 and, and 593 elevations. Those are the elevations we want to target to restore um, with our dredge. So in red, I've done just a rough sketch on top of here. I'll show you a more detailed plan in a second. Um, but we've essentially proposed to cut a large uh, hole through this sandbar, that lighter patch that you see near that's accumulated near the boat ramp, allow uh, boats to traffic into the, the center part of the channel. And through that center alignment, approximately on, on the red path that you see, we would propose to have at least uh, around a three foot depth of water during low flow conditions. The low flow condition is around 596 and a half. Um, and we've seen that last fall was one of the lowest uh, water conditions that the river experienced. It was around 596 and a half. So if we can get down to 593 with our dredge um, and cut through those 596 and 597, 598 elevations, we're gonna keep a path open that's wide enough for a boat to traffic about 15 to 20 feet wide. And that will be maintained um, hopefully in perpetuity with an ongoing maintenance plan. So I'm gonna show you a little more uh, detail. So this is our, uh, our CAD, our plan sheet that shows what that alignment looks like. Essentially, right at the boat ramp, you have a wider footprint that the boats can get out, and they can also turn around in that footprint. And then you have the the east fork uh, branches out, so there's some a, a path that kind of stays on the north side of the river, and there's one that goes to the south that'll cut across the middle of the river. And we're going to end it at Bridge Street, um, and then we we'll have it wrapped going to the west. It'll connect through a, uh, a deep pool, and then it'll end just south of where this island is. Um, and that is approximately where you return to a depth of water that's navigable. So that's the scope or limit of our project. Um, here's a close up of what that cut is to get through this sandbar. Uh, to get out to the middle of the river. Um, the cross section that we're looking at may or may not be of interest to folks, but essentially we're trying to restore about three feet of, of depth within a 15 to 20 foot path. And we have proposed to use access through the park during construction. So there'll be a temporary staging area uh, where we can mobilize the amphibious excavator equipment. Uh, they'll then use, likely they'll use part of that sandbar to mobilize to start their cut path. And then we'll leave some of the means and methods up to the contractor. Right now, I've got just a uh, brief timeline that follows what I've discussed with Chairman Wheeler and Jeremiah. At this point in time, we are conducting a muscle survey. Um, this area of the Kankakee River had a couple of scientific reports that were done more than a decade ago um, that detected a, a, a muscle called the sheep nose muscle. Un uh, unfortunately for us, that muscle is federally protected. So we have to go to the river and comb the area around our channel, um, which is what I was showing previously. We have basically have to comb that area along that red path to see if there's any of these sheep nose mussels. If there's not, we're in the clear and we just submit that report with our dredge permit. And we anticipate that schedule wise, if we submit our dredge permit in this next month, in July, then we would have uh, the Corps, the Army Corps of Engineers typically takes three to five months um, for review, at least a 90 day period on the low end, sometimes 120 days up on the high end. 
Uh, so we've anticipated by the end of the year, we would acquire our permits for dredging the river, and then we would get our bid documents ready uh, with the final construction plan at the start of the year. And our goal would be to bid it uh, start of the year through February and March, and then to have a contractor mobilized to perform the dredge operation around April of 2024. So we're still on track with that timeline. Um, and if you have any questions, just let me know or Chairman Wheeler know, but that's our plan for now. And we have uh, discussed this uh, path for dredging uh, back and forth with the county to make sure that this works for, uh, for the stakeholders that are involved. So. Uh, we'll continue to follow this plan and, and get it permitted. All right, thank you. Any questions or comments? I, I do have a question, uh, Charles. The um, because this hasn't come up since we just met this morning. Are we? St and I heard you say amphibious excavator. Is this uh, going to be a water dredge? You know, the 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 water jet pipe dredge, or is it going to be an excavator, or would it be both, or is it contractor's choice? I mean, I was, it, it's I, our it's my belief from talking to uh, to. Uh, well, one, having performed a recent dredge project, and two, talking to another engineer in my office that they will likely um, do wet bucket removal or an amphibious removal rather than using a hydraulic dredge, which is a pumping operation. Hydraulic dredging is um, requires a large dewatering pit, and also it's not very it's not as efficient as scooping. Um, so we, we believe that the contractor will use, they will mobilize using platforms or amphibious equipment and that they will move that uh, staging uh, platform as they move their, their uh, digging operation. But we believe it's going to be wet buckets. So basically they're going to be scooping out that, that path. I do not believe it's going to be wet uh, hydraulic dredge. Okay. And then the other part was... Um, the uh, um, oh geez, there's there was one other aspect of this that we talked about this morning. Oh, it's the the update of the plan if we're going to maintain it. Is that the same kind of permit, or do we have to get a different permit for that, or how does that work? Because I can see a time after this that in a couple years we may have to go out and clean out with our amphibious excavator one of those legs. Um, yes, and I'm, we we believe your. Um, your permit's gonna, your dredge permit's gonna stay effective for at least a few years, and then we'll uh, go through a renewal process, which is essentially just paperwork to, uh, you, you just request an extension of, of renewing that permit, um, and that should allow you to continue uh, as needed to keep this uh, gray path shown <laughs> Uh, free and open at the at the the depth that we need. So in a, in effect, this initial project is a great learning opportunity for the people at the county that will be doing this work going forward. Okay. Yes, I, I believe so because we based on the uh, flood events that you receive, uh, if we stay in a lower water condition for a couple of years, that the dredge path may stay open and free, and it, which would be good for us. But if we do receive a major flood event that could move sediment, it may fill back in within one to two or three years, and there will be need to maintain it in some areas. Thank you. Mr. Fedon. Uh, I, was, I was wondering where you came up with the number for the bottom of the uh, channel for the, uh, dread, or the scoop area or retrieval area. Yeah, basically we, uh, looked at what is an average uh, you know fishing or, or small vessel boat um, what is the depth needed so that they don't bottom out and there are some um, navigation guidelines that that indicate okay for a certain size uh, vessel you need this depth of water in general uh, most smaller vessels are not re going to require more than one to two feet. 
of depth, but we targeted three feet of depth during a low water condition to make sure that uh, the boats are able to navigate without bottoming in, in any areas along this path. Okay, most fishing boats today, guys are using the bigger ones, are, they're, they're nine and a half feet wide. Just the boat itself, just sitting there, it's not even moving. So you have two of them passing each other, going one going each way, you're not gonna make it. So just thought I'd say that. My driveway, yes. my, my, one of my garage doors is 18 feet. I can't fit the car and the boat through it without getting close. And you get people out there on the weekend, they wanna hurry up and they wanna have their fun and then go for a ride and they have to sit there for 20 minutes wait for the traffic to decide which way it's going. It's not gonna work out very good. Just my opinion. I, yeah, no, I, I think that's a, a good point. One thing to keep in mind is there still is the south side of the river so the south side of the river has no obstruction. As far as we know, that area is deep enough already that boats can get through it. So if you have somebody, for example, going upstream and they're gonna uh, go from uh, the west side all the way back east going upstream, they would likely take the south side of the river. But we can also um, discuss with uh, the county highway and, and others if we make this path a little bit wider. I, I have no objection to that. Um, what we tried to do was get something that would not be overly widened. Um, the reason why is it gets into what uh, Chairman Wheeler calls the garden hose effect. So the sandbar is there uh, because that side of the, the river has low velocities. So basically it settled out there and it, it the river wants it to settle out there, if you will. Um, and so we f felt if we removed the entire sandbar and gave you a huge wide, all the way from bank to bank open area, essentially that will make the velocities even lower. And that will make, uh, that would make the sediment come back quicker, if that makes sense. So by refining it to just this pinched uh, area that's wide enough for boat traffic, but it's not taking the whole river, uh, we'll keep the velocities faster in there, and that should clean it better. Okay, and then originally you, you had said, a couple of our meetings, you had said that you wanted to use the uh, water to catch the sand and all that type of stuff, but uh, along that stretch there to the west, Every time there's a storm or a high water event, we lose trees all along that shoreline there. I mean, I, I fish there all the time. So every year in the spring, there's another tree laying down the river across right there, right where you're right there. So you can I go see. along that bank and I can probably identify 10 or 15 trees right now that are ready to fall in today. So they would be falling down across the channel. Chairman Wheeler. Uh, that's why we're getting the attachments for our amphibious excavator so we can go in there and pull them out and cut them before they even fall. Now, the one thing they have in Indiana that's important to realize is the legislation gave them an easement. I believe it's about 50 foot on each side of the river. Here, we'd have to get permission from the property owner if the tree looks like it's going to fall. But if they sign off on it, we can go grab the tree before it goes in the water, to your point. And so there'll have to be more, that's part of those active management strategies. I want to say we've taken out 10,000 trees in Indiana, just the ones that are leaning and getting ready to fall or that have already fallen in the water. It's a lot of trees. It's, I mean, it's substantial what has happened because frankly, it's, it's a lot of shoreline, you know, so. So it falls down on Friday afternoon and boom, goes down in the river and the people come here on Saturday to take their boat out and they can't get out. Well, it, this isn't like DoorDash. Right. Yeah. Um, no, that's what I mean. Sorry. It's not a fire truck. You have to have flashing <laughs> lights on it. Oh, we got a log in the river. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, it cannot be done overnight. Yeah. yeah. Well, we can't address it now because we'll have the ability right. to do so a Correct. lot quicker than it would be before. Correct. So. Yeah, that's true. Armor. Miss Armour's herbs. What is the traffic like? What is allowed? Like, is two boats going to be able to fit through there? Or is there one boat? How's how is it going to be directed? I guess that's. The, I mean, that's the question. I think you're trying to get to is, what's the depth? What's the width of? You said twenty. I think. Uh, Charlie, do you have an answer for that? 
Yeah, so we, we right now on paper, we have uh, 15 to 20 foot at the bottom and it will go back up. So at the top, it'll be more like 25 or 30 feet. Um, but at the, yeah, I mean, we can make this a little bit wider. If there's a concern uh, of, of, you know, let's say 10 foot, two 10 foot wide boats passing each other using this path, uh, we can make it a little wider at the bottom, let's say 30 feet wide. And I, I think our team would be fine with that. Um, and we can just circle back with the, the county and uh, Chairman Wheeler, just make sure everybody's fine with that. Uh, I have no issues with it. We just didn't wanna go uh, and cut bank to bank. Essentially wanted to keep what we need for uh, a couple of vessels and no more than that. Right. And then uh, I, have one more. I'm, I still have the floor or no? Go ahead. The other thing along that area there where those trees are there is uh, those are pretty low to the water also right now, today. I mean, you couldn't get a boat along there without kneeling down on your knees and going underneath them. So there's tree removal has to go on there right now to put that channel where you got it marked at right now. And that, I think we have some extra allowance in our construction budget because we haven't gone bank to bank. We started with a wider footprint of dredging and we walked back some of that so that we could conserve it for additional as needed items. Um, some of those as needed items will be mobilizing and getting access. And it's my, my uh, thought that as part of the construction, we will allow a tree clearing budget uh, to occur along the bank as needed uh, to, to access and create the initial clearing for the path. Okay, thank you. General Wheeler? It's just, it's very important to realize that we don't have access to that land. That's not our land. We have to be given permission to go on that land and get it. Mm -hmm. um, and I believe the way it works, it's considered a navigable stream, so the property owner owns up to the low water mark of the water. If it was non-navigable, they would own up to the center line of the river. I believe that's the way that works. So. In, in this case, you know, the, the, the water jets is, is hopefully to keep it clear. The reason we were dredging this side of the river was to get emergency boats into the water because the other side of the island is where everybody goes. And so I, I get widening and we should look at that, but not to where it takes us over the amount of money we have because it won't get done. And we just don't have a budget for anything over that. Well, it's less than a million because engineering's in, in that involved as well. And, and Charles has got to get paid. You know, he likes that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I do not want to ignore the fact that we had someone from um, the public that had their, their hands up um, and I believe had a question. However, I wanted to make sure that we like to answer all the questions that anybody may have, but it's not the proper procedure to allow the public to directly ask questions to the board outside of the board members and uh, the guests that are here present. So I would encourage you, if you have any questions from the public there, to after the meeting to meet with the uh, you know the highway department or uh, you know Chairman Wheeler or anybody else that will have a little deeper information that can actually answer your question. Um, so it's any other board member, any questions or comments? Mr. Snipes? Uh, Mr. Chairman, e even though we, uh, those are the rules, uh, if it's germane, uh, if the question is germane, they're basically asked because they have just listened to the information and they are here, uh, the, the sitting body here can allow uh, that comment if they so desire up to whatever uh, few minutes that you would uh, allow it through, via motion. Um, if that's something that the <laughs> committee would entertain. But um, there is always a way for the uh, public and I'm a proponent of letting the people speak so that we can hear their concerns and then you don't have to answer them but we can definitely hear them and uh, that can be placed on the table at some time if it's uh, uh, apropos to this uh, 
uh, to the issue at hand. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Um, I believe that this will be the, um, according to the agenda, will be the end of the portion of the agenda that it's related to the waterways. So we're gonna continue and go forward with the meeting, which is going to be the highway uh, department portion. Uh, under the highway here, we have Mr. Hayden, uh, I believe we have no bidding or letting, correct? Correct. And we'd have no resolutions. Correct. So what we have under the highway right now is that county engineers uh, pay estimates, and I believe that you have received this uh, page here, which has all of the payments. And as you can see, it has quite a few things that uh, need to be uh, paid and addressed. And what I like to do is if I can have a motion in a second to combine in order to approve this, and then we go into comments or questions, and then after that, the vote, Mr. Donnell, Fettel in second, and that he made it first. Okay, everybody um, in favor, just for the motion to do this, in favor, if you signify by say aye. Okay, anybody who pulls same sign? Okay, I'm gonna open the, uh, the floor for any comments or any questions, anything on the uh, combined pay estimates that you like to address separately or talk about. Anything, no? All right, so I hear none. So what we're gonna do is it's gonna go ahead and do a roll call uh, to approve the pay estimates for the engineering. Um, can I have a roll call, please? Go ahead. Need a second motion? You want to continue with the same motion? Okay. So the same, the same uh, members. Mr. Carrico. Aye. Mr. Dunnel. Aye. Mr. Featherling. Aye. Mr. Snipes. Aye. Mr. Armour Herbs. Aye. Ms. Turner. Aye. Mr. Wheeler. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, is any old business, any old business, any new business, any new business, any other business, any other business? No. All right, can I have a motion and a second to adjourn? Motion made. Okay, let's turn a second. Everybody in favor signify by say aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? 